down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. What's going on, Savvy Investors? Hopefully you had a great weekend. Yes, my name is Steve Van Kallenberg. You tuned in to the Savvy Radio Show. And what's on my mind? Well, what's on my mind today is to help you hire contractors. Yes, this has been the debacle of life for seems to be like everyone in real estate investing. You're going to come across a contractor. You're going to need a contractor. And you may even be been boozled by a contractor. So what I'm going to do is just cover some quick things to help you get you going in the right direction and just some quick tips to uh, hopefully you can save you some headache in the future. Anyway, who am I? My name is Steve Van Kalenberg. I've actually written a book on this called Hiring Contractors. It's my green book and my series. Yes, I've been rehabbing houses since 1999. All aspects, foundation, electrical, roofing, plumbing, three-story building, done commercial work, all kinds of random stuff. So um, I'm not perfect, but I have an, an idea of how to do well in construction. Do I win all the time? No. But how do I make money? Yep, through construction. When I'm competing against another real estate investor and I know that it costs them $8,000 to do the roof, maybe it be retail or a little bit below retail, I'm paying $4,000 for that roof. How and why? Well, why is this how you make money? But how is because of knowledge. And that's what I'm going to try to cover today is the more that you know, the more that you make. I mean, that's just pretty common sense. So I'm going to break this down real fast, down and dirty. Hopefully you will get some nuggets from this. And if you have any feedback, if I forget something, la da 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 da. Anyway, you got to have a process. You got to identify what works. You got to have a system and you got to define the system and you got to have a plan. You can't say, hey, uh, like this is a perfect example. I'm in the middle of a rehab right now. And I've had some problems in before about cabinets, painting, and so on and so forth. So this time, I'm like, I'm not playing around. I'm going to go after this like an animal. So I researched, asked. Before, I would just ask a few people. Nope. I went above and beyond, and I created a plan, and I executed that plan. And then as I'm working that plan, I have to adjust. And then you got to have, with your plan, you got to have a budget. And then you got to have a goal. And also, you got to ask questions to other people. Now, real quick, um, I'm going to throw some terms out there. I want to make sure you understand what they are. GC is different than a handyman. A GC is aka a general contractor. A handyman is a guy that just does somewhat semi-skilled work. What's a subcontractor? Do you know what a subcontractor? He works under a contractor. Material is material. So that's just a group thing. So like thin set tile is material. Tools or tools, tradesmen. Okay, tradesmen it gets confusion between is a handyman and tradesman. Well, tradesman is usually someone that's specialized in one specific area. For example, a trim carpenter would be a trails a tradesman. In a supply house is what's a supply house, aka that could be like lock supply or a plumbing supply place. Some people might even think that a Home Depot is a supply place. That's that's into interpretation. And then a punch list. So you got to understand the terms, analogy, the terms, and you got to know the lingo of dealing with a contractor or a handyman. If they get a, a whiff at all that you don't know the, oh man, not, not no, hold on. If they get a whiff that you don't, are not educated in something, then they may charge you more for your ignorance. So make sure you kind of have an idea of what you're talking about before you roll it by somebody else. I definitely think that, you know, rule of thumb that I have through all my books was another set of eyes works. So get with someone else on a construction job and just get their opinion. When I first, I just did a very large uh, rehab job and I went with a guy, I, I brought a guy over there and just to hear and see what he would think. And a lot of things that he said made sense, some of the things that he didn't make sense, but it changed my perspective. And I think if you have a, a, a wide angle lens of what you're trying to do, life will be a lot easier. Okay, now in the beginning, you need to walk through the property. Now, I'm telling you, this is very fascinating 
that when I started this massive construction job from the beginning, the way I view tile is different than when I started. I mean, I've been to so many tile places, so many different grout places. I mean, not grout places, but places that offer grout. And then I came across a wonderful friend that helped me out with this situation that there's a new epoxy grout out that's already been sealed. And so there's a lot of things that are changing in the technology of of the tradesmen or construction that you need to be privy to just so you don't get into something. And that, that was this other investor's heartache who's like, man, I wish I would have known about that grout that was already pre-sealed. His life would have been easier down the line. Take before and after pictures. Google up as much as you can, as often as you can, and bring a friend. I mean, more than one friend. Even if you have to coax them to take you to lunch, bring a friend. Different different set of eyes um, You is way better than your eyes because your eyes are what? Emotional. Or you're overwhelmed and you got to stick the stick to the course. All right. So you got to get a, a a process in place. All right. Before you call a general contractor or a handyman or whatever the case may be, you want to know what you're willing to pay them. Now there's a website that I use. It's pretty popular now, but I mean I discovered this about 4 or 5 years ago, maybe 6. It's called HomeWise, H-O-M-W-Y-S-E.com. A little backstory, uh, I was at a list of Mr. Landlord conference about six, seven years ago, and I ran into, I was running a round table, and the, this gal, she was completely devastated uh, that she couldn't, she felt like she couldn't be successful in real estate because she was being taken advantage of in with contractors in doing what she's trying to do. And that was kind of the main, the backstory of why I wrote how to hire a contractor. Cause I'm like, how could this be such a problem? And maybe because she was a gal, I don't know. Maybe she wasn't willing to, to dive deep into it. But then I came across homewise.com, H O M E W Y S E. What this does, it arms you of knowledge of what it could or what it should call cost you to get like, say a door installed or if you need to lay some concrete for a driveway or put in a kitchen sink. Man, I'm telling you right now, HomeWise just takes two seconds, a few clicks. It's not perfect. I have tested it several times, but at least it gives you a, a gauge. And then when you're meeting with a contractor, whatever the skill it is, are they skilled or unskilled? Are they labored? Are they actually doing the job? Are they the general contractor? And the big question is, how long is it going to take? And who's going to do the job? And you got to know what you're looking for. What's their age? What's the amount? What's the future? Do you want to do business with them? That's kind of an important factor as well. Also, you want to ask other investors of the process. Hey, have you laid concrete before? Have you done drainage before? So that's a very powerful thing. I mean, you can go to a local real estate club meeting, network before and after, and get majority, probably all of your questions answered if you just ask a few people of what you're struggling with. Not everyone's laid concrete, but it, someone in that room knows someone that has, and it could help you tremendously. Even flooring has such, there's so many variables in flooring. Is it is it level? How do you level flooring? Do you know about auto, auto leveling, that material that's $30 a bag? Do you know about that? Another thing you can do too is check out the Home Depot app, and there's a lot of um, powerful information on there. It's for the pro side, but you can get material costs real, real quickly and then be organized with it. Okay. Be organized. When you interview somebody, write down notes about them. All right. The next one here. So some organizational things that you kind of need to know if you're going to hire people in the future, you, you, I have a spreadsheet of everyone that I do business with their skill set, what they're doing, how how did they do? Was I happy with them? There's one guy that I just recently hired, and I, I blurred the lines. He's really good at woodworking, but he's not good at painting. He's not good at these other things. And I was in a hurry, and he was available, and guess what I did? I hired him, and it slowed me down, cost me money, and it just was a disaster. Also, with your shoebox, you want to make sure that you're cl- collateralizing, not collateralizing, organizing, classifying, is it a rehab or a remodel? And I guess that could be another episode later. Also, you can use the, the app Evernote that could help you organize some information, 
Google Drive, and there's tons of YouTube videos. And I also keep notes on roofs and for the future. So when someone offers me a price, for example, I just did a roof around the corner for 2,500 bucks. And then someone's trying to quote me 4,000. I'm learning the difference between which a square, a ridge, a start, so on. And you get the fake picture. Now, when you're trying to find a contractor, how do you find a contractor? Well, first of all, you ask for referrals. You know, Facebook group is pretty huge, but I mean, I notice when I see those recommendations, everyone has has an opinion. You know, you can go to supply houses, ask the guy behind the counter, the lady that's at Lowe's that works there all day long. She knows and sees somebody. Craigslist works driving around. I would drive by a drop site and I see a pickup truck and I see it on a consistent basis. It may, it may be a, a Mason. I pull over and I ask them and, you know, act like a contractor, dress like a contractor, act like a contractor. And then, uh, in the RIA in your local club. Now, I mean, again, some people would just voluntarily information to them, but you know, contractors are not as consistent as you want them to be or what they should be. And I've seen some issues where a bad contractor got involved with RIA and a lot of people were using that guy. And then now they're just dissatisfied. Tech schools are a wonderful place. Where do they learn heat and air? They go to a tech school. So check that out. Supply houses. I mentioned that earlier. Even, even if you're looking for a handyman, you might want to try Ace Hardware and investors as well. Like me, you know, I'm not real forthright in giving you my contacts. And one main reason, not because I'm stingy, is because I don't want that guy to tear up your stuff and then you get frustrated with me because I referred him. So that's why I don't really really refer people unless I extremely vet them out. And then I always say I've used them on my own personal property. And it's on the cover of my red book, Due Diligence Always Pays Off. Listen, don't, like I'm helping out an investor this week about interviewing an individual. You, you've got to go all out and this is your life. You have a lot riding on your success, why would you cut corners when you hire somebody? Do your due diligence and interview them, get references. And that leads me into the bids. Ask for referrals, get three in three different individual bids. Okay. I, to this day, I still do it. Now, when you interact with these people, are they aggressive? Are they trying to get your business or they're just trying to pad, um, or trying to keep them busy? Give them a test. Show me what you've done before. Ask for pictures. Not all pictures are exactly what you want them to be. Like they're, they may be their friends' pictures, but then maybe have them explain to you how they got it done. And I always test them as much as possible. Now, here's some questions that you need to ask to get the ball really rolling when you're really at the end of the, de- at the, end of the decision-making process. Here it is. Who's actually doing the work? Are you working for someone? Are you the person on my paying? And how long you've been doing this type of work? And do you have a helper working with you? Ask them, how long will this take? What delays will we have? Do you offer an incentive if you or a concession, meaning will I get a discount if you don't get it t- done in a timely manner? And then always ask, how long will it take it done and when it will be done? That's so funny that those two questions sound alike. How long will it take and when will it be done? Doesn't that kind of sound the same? Mm-mm. This happens to me all the time. I'm like, how long will this take? Uh, probably six, seven days. Okay, when will it get done? Oh, by the end of November. You see the difference? They don't understand. A lot of contractors don't understand the scope of time. You as a real estate investor, you know that time is everything. You can't replace it. You can't buy it. So you are buying somewhat of time, but you can never replace it. And then ask them, how long have they been in the industry? Why do they become a tile layer? Or why are they doing it? What's their favorite thing they like to do? Connect with the contractor. Make sure you understand who they are, where they live at, just in case you have a legal battle. Find out everything you possibly can. Look them up on court records. Find out if they have a DUI. Find out if they've been sued. Find out if they have an LLC. Why do they have an LLC? I mean, I'm serious. I know this sounds like over the top, like, man, Van Comber, you sound like a psycho. Well, here's the deal. Like I said earlier in the beginning of the thing, how do I make money? Through construction. How do you lose money? Through construction. Which way are you going to go? You got it. I'm telling you, you got to go all out or you're going to have headaches. And if you, I'm telling you, go show up to a local real estate club meeting or come to the landlord lunch or just have some sort of networking 
everyone in the room, at least half of the room, is belly ached or had something went wrong. I would say 80% of the people in the room have been burned by a contractor some form or fashion. And they always say at the end, I wish I would have done more due diligence. Yes. When I ask for three bids and I want to drive over and look at their roof, do I want to do that? No. It's raining outside. But I realize that if I don't do it, then it's going to be a problem. Now, it's going to cost me money in the long time. Is it really worth it? Now, that is not always the perfect science, but at least this will get you going. My name is Stephen Van Kalenberg. You tuned in to the Savvy Radio Show. Save money on construction so you can bless somebody else. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 